In golf and in life, it's all in the hips. Well, definitely in golf anyway, guys, all right? So today we're gonna to have a little look through how you can mobilize and create extra flexibility through the hips, how you can then activate those pathways, the big muscles around the posterior chain, and basically connect your lower body and your upper body both through functional movement and in your goals. So obviously that's where the power's at and we see how much rotation, how much load and speed is created through the hips and if you allow that to de degenerate, if it's not as good as it could be, you're missing out on golf performance because you're gonna lose out on power from the ground, you're not gonna be able to use your legs the way that you want to in the swing and in general, you're gonna slow down your rotation because of the lack of separation, the lack of, lack of overall mobility and range of motion can really hinder your movement patterns. And it can happen in numerous different ways, but today is ideal for all golfers, whether you just want to do this at home, on a morning, get things freshened up, get the body moving, or as a golf warm-up, this will help you out in so many ways, guys, all right? So, the first thing to look at is Flexibility, mobility, range of motion, basically how you can put those areas in a certain position. And these are my two favorite movements, my two go-to movements that are gonna allow you to create that extended range. So number one is gonna be the 1990 internal and external knee taps. Okay, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna sit up, you can have your hands on the ground if needed, if you can do it without your hands on the ground, good on you, keep it up, all right? So that's what we're trying to progress to, but basically you're gonna keep the torso as tall as possible. You can have one knee on the inside, one knee on the outside, and alternate through those patterns, okay? So try and hit the full range of motion so your knee will touch the ground on both sides, both internal and external, and really, again, neutral spine, good breathing mechanics, and try and free up those hips for those patterns, okay? Number two is going to be the three steps hip opener cycle, all right? So again, these names, I've got to work on them, all right? But basically here, you're gonna go into what is a stationary lunge pad. You're gonna lunge forwards. You can have the assistance of a golf club or anything else. Then you're gonna go 45 degrees and open up to 90 degrees. Then you're gonna go back to 45, and back to where you started, and cycle through that range. You're gonna open out the hip, both in terms of going forwards and laterally, and that's gonna give you a really nice opener, okay? Once we start to feel that function, the combination of those two movements is gonna get you feeling free and ready to go, okay? Once you have that movement, the best thing is to activate. And obviously when we're talking about the hip, really, we're talking about the glutes and the posterior chain in general. Glutes are those big muscles. And once we've opened up the hips, if we can get the glutes firing, you're gonna benefit your posture, your ground reaction forces, and basically just how well you can swing the club, okay? So again, we got a couple of movements right here for you. Number one is going to be the club hold good morning, okay? So here, what we're trying to do is keep just a slight flex of the knee, push our hips backwards, and allow the chest to come forwards. Again, maintaining that neutral spine, create a lot of tension and activation through the posterior chain, specifically the hamstrings at this point. You're gonna continue through that motion until you get to the end range of wherever that is for you. Again, you'll know because the hamstrings will be firing. And at that point, you are gonna extend the hip. You're gonna fire the glutes and come back up to standing. Okay, so again, slight bend of the knee, add the activation, be aware of how to engage the muscle and then put it to work, okay? After that, we can get a little bit more dynamic. And again, as a warm up, this is gonna help you out so much when you step onto the first tee. And we're gonna go into jumping lunges, uh, jumping squats, okay? So as we go into jumping squats, you're gonna get down into a good range of motion. What I want you to be aware of here is how you use the rest of your body to compress the ground, engage the full foot, and then accelerate up, okay? The patterns are very important, and intent. This is something we keep talking about, intent in your movement. So really compress down into the ground, push the ground, create an opposite reaction, and Elevate yourself, okay? Add a little spice and throw a 180 rotation in there and your golf swing is gonna be jacked up, ready to go. So that's your mobility, that's your activation. And then think about the swing itself because this is gonna have some huge benefits and then how you actually swing the club is gonna be affected as well. And what we wanna look at is the rotation of the hips. 
And what I look for here is freedom of the lead leg during the back swing. Okay, if you want to get your hips rotated, this is pretty much going to guarantee that that is going to happen. And what I look for, obviously as a right-handed player, lead leg is my left leg. I want my lead knee to go towards my trail foot in the backswing because that's going to shift the pressure. It's going to allow me to engage the ground in that trail foot and then start to work around that in terms of my rotation up and through the whole system. And the cool thing is, generally equal and opposite reactions. If you rotate the hips on the way back, you got a good chance of rotating the hips on the way down as well, guys, okay? So I really do let that lead knee move. We load up into that trail hip. That's where your activation comes in. That's where that solidity uh, and stable joint position is gonna be huge. And because you're nice and mobile, we load it up, then we turn down. You create that separation between the upper and lower body, and that's a good golf swing right there. And because you have that range of motion, because your hips are working so much better, all the power you create through the ground, through your feet, is gonna be transferred up through the whole system. You're not gonna let any go. At the middle point where we start to leak energy, you're gonna be able to transfer it better. Your torso moves better, your core's engaged against those hips, and then we're golfing strong. All right, our clubs are moving well, we're rotating good, and we're getting the maximum out of our body possible. So, it really is all in the hips, guys, okay? Make sure you add these in at least a few times a week. It's only gonna take you five, 10 minutes. It'll make a huge difference. And if you do this before you go play, instead of taking a couple of holes to kind of figure it out, you're gonna step on that first tee, the body's gonna be ready to go, and you can execute in much more the way that you want to. So, this is a small piece of information. The hips are very important but your body is very important if you want to play your best golf. This is a great place to start, guys, all right? Get some freedom in those hips and power in your golf swing. And where next? Go ahead and download the Golf World app. It's a free download. You've got a bunch of free trials. You've got mobility. We've got levels for all golfers. It is the home of golf fitness. Go ahead and get you some. And subscribe to the channel. Go play some golf. Do the work. Golf strong.